Hey Dan, Terry Bradley here, simpleswingthoughts.com, and here's your video analysis. Uh, sorry about the delay, uh, had some things to take care of, but um, finally getting caught up on uh, my analysis. Now, um, first of all, Dan, I'd like to commend you for sending your swing. Um, I know that when people send in swings, they definitely want to get better in golf. And and what I've done, Dan, is I've put you up here in the in the limelight up here, up top, and down here, I have a PGA Pro, um, Mr. Kingston, uh, plays on the European Tour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just compare your positionings, and uh, we'll sort of see how we can match it up and see where we can uh, improve uh, on our swings. Now, uh, the one thing I couldn't do, then I couldn't download the Dropbox uh, for your your videos. Uh, a lot of times, uh, those those kind of uh, software packages are kind of hard to um, to download. So uh, when you send it a new swing, Dan, if you do, go ahead and send it in like maybe an MOV, maybe MP4, something that I can convert so I can have your swing in motion. But I did look at your swing, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start comparing it to Mr. Kingston down here. Now, the first thing that I noticed, Dan, is uh, on your setup, uh, what you may want to do um, and you got a good setup, actually. Um, it's just right now I think what happens is you're a little bit a um, little bit square now K Kingston does look square too um, at, at more square at the bottom here uh, but what happens is uh, you see you see your head Dan let me just draw a line here right quick for you Dan right here on the on the air I'm gonna draw a line and you're you're right on top of the ball Okay, now let's take a look at uh, Mr. Kingston down here. Mr. Kingston is a little bit behind the ball. Now that does make a big difference uh, because what happens is uh, Mr. Kingston's a little bit behind the ball, which simply means that he's gearing himself to actually make that good, that good shoulder turn on the way back. Now from there, Dan, and I'm kind of, oops, kind of switching your pictures up a little bit. Um, from there, what I want to do is I want to get into um, your actual swing here, and I'm having to move things around. Um, your backswing looked decent, Dan. It looked like you were trying to take uh, your, take the club back on plane and and sort of come down on plane. Uh, but let me just show you something here with this picture down here, and I'm going to move this up to keep you up top here now. Now notice, Dan, notice how you're coming down into the ball. Notice where your hands are. Your hands are still like right outside your hips. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Mr. Kingston, I'm going to take his swing back and sort of get a feel for where he is. Now as you can see, as, uh, as Kingston comes down, we're going to compare his arms where your arms are. Okay, You see where his club is? His his hands are about the same place yours is, about right there. You see where his club is? His club is still kind of lagging behind, whereas yours, um, and I know sometimes these videos can be kind of distorted, but you're, see how your club's a little flatter right there? And um, which means that you're kind of throwing your club over the top, but it does look like you're trying to keep your hands close to your body um, to to try to get to the ball. But notice how uh, Mr. Kingston's, how he's already come into the ball. Notice your head position, Dan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna always draw lines on head positions because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a heads kind of guy. You know how I feel about head behind the ball. See how your head's on top of the ball right there? And notice Kingston's head. You see where his head is? His head is well behind the ball because see what he wants to do is he wants to shift his weight automatically. Here, Dan, you're kind of stuck. Now, if your head were more, like, say, over here, you see, then you could get out of the way of your club. Your your weight would get out of the way. And where that's going to show up, Dan, that's going to show up in your actual um, ball strike. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to your actual contact here, Dan, right, right here. Now, you did recover pretty well, Dan, because uh, in striking the ball, Again, you, you kept your head where it was, even though it wasn't behind the ball, you still kept it where it needed to be 
in terms of uh, you didn't get any further ahead of the ball. So, um, but you did try to save it a little bit. Looks like your club face is a little closed. Looks like you kind of flipped your hands a little bit to try to save it. Now let's go down to here to Mr. Kingston to see where where he is in his hands. Okay, and right there you're all about the same spot. Ball's coming off about the same way. The only difference, Dan, again, again, is head position, head position. You see Kingston's head? It's, it's well behind the ball, so all this can get out of the way. All of his left side can get out of the way. Uh, here, again, you saved it a little bit, but as you can see, your weight is still centered right here. You know, you still got the center position going here. Uh, you need to be more back, and you need to sort of hit through the ball. Now, I know you're probably a little older than Mr. Kingston, but what I'm saying is if you can get into these positions at all, as, as little as you can or maybe as much as you can, you're going to have a better ball striking day. In, in doing that. I'm not saying that you have to get as low and as as cradled as Mr. Kingston but by no means, but the point is you can definitely keep your head behind the ball a little bit more and uh, get more of a release to your to your left side. Now real quick over here on the down the line uh, we have um, uh, another PGA guy here. Now um, see how your hands are right here at impact there, Dan. Um, in other words, you're trying to save it, which is which is okay. Your body tries to save it. You just got to make sure that your head position is where it needs to be. Now, let's go back to the pro down here and see what he's up to. Now, as he as he brings his club back, what we're going to see, we're going to see, uh, we're going to put his hands right in position where you, yours are. And so, as you can see, um, you, it looks like... I don't know. I don't know. Did you already hit the ball? I can't tell. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, Dan, as, 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 as the uh, pro comes into the ball, notice how um, he has his... Now, he's got his foot off the ground a little bit more than I like, but but the point is he, he's getting the club out in front of him. He's bringing the club down right on plane. Okay, he's getting the club out in front of him right here. And um, he's, he's going to be able to get through the ball. Notice his head position again is behind the ball. Um, it looks like that you might be a little more on top of the ball. So it's just basically shifting your weight, Dan, making sure that keeping this head behind the ball at all times will help this weight shift automatically. And I think if you do that, it looks like you do have the, the flexibility and the strength uh, to, to improve your swing uh, with, the, with your head position. So I hope this helps. Um, practice it. I know you only have a few weeks left. Um, I'm in the same part of the country as you are right now, but... If you can, get out there, make a few swings, make a few swings in your house. Just get the muscle memory down. I'll have another email going out this week uh, on this very subject in terms of rotation of your hands and your head position, all that kind of stuff. So you can really, really get this into muscle memory. Okay? All right, Dan, take care. Team up, hit them straight. Uh, if you need anything, just comment at the bottom of your post, and uh, I'll get right back with you. Okay? Take care. Bye.